Well, hey everybody, welcome back. Fur is it cold out here. So it's late October, it's Halloween day, and we're gonna have a little bit of fun on this episode. We've got a big mine here. There's four giant portals going into the side of this mountain, but I think we're only gonna be able to get to maybe two today. What in the world, jeez. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna head on into this mine. Would you be quiet back there? Shush up already. My goodness. Anyways, we're gonna head on into this mine and see what we can see. Okay, let's, let's get things started. are going to another very large underground mine. This one is supposed to be the largest uh, underground operation in all of Nevada. This was in operation um, full swing in the late 70s and early 80s and I think they eventually shut it down mid 1980s. It's a giant tungsten mine. Ooh. Yeah. That ought to be pretty. Yeah, so... Can we get the black lights in there? Yeah, absolutely. So we should have some she, she light in this mine. So we're going to give the UV flashlight to Randy. Hopefully we can find some really cool uh, fluorescent minerals. But this mine has had a lot of visitors over the years. Um, a lot of YouTubers have been out here. Various explorers since, you know, 2014, 2015. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get into it because of its popularity. They may have it completely barred off. We'll just have to see. But we're in the area and there's a lot of cool stuff around here. So I thought, heck, let's go check it out. Nice. Yep. I'm glad to be here. It's a pretty, pretty area. This is a beautiful area. I love this part of Nevada. This is going to be really a lot of fun because, um, like I said, even though a lot of people have been to this mine, there's some areas of it I've always wanted to explore myself. There's multiple boreholes that are four to six feet in diameter, and those boreholes were being used as escape routes in case there was a problem deep in the mine. Um, were those the ones you were telling me about last night? Exactly. Those are the ones I was telling you They're about. They're smooth? Uh-huh. They are. They were they were bored with, I, I do believe, a diamond drill bit. My God, what a piece of machinery. The other thing I really wanted to take a close look at this mine is uh, there's an elevator in here. And, and no one has ever climbed up the ladders on that elevator to see if they can get into the, into upper levels. They've done a fine job of, of filming the elevator and the cage and whatnot, but no one has ever climbed that, that crazy ladder. So I wanna see if that's something doable. Okay, so this is the furthest one um, in, in a long line of, of, of the portals. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna hop out real quick, see if this one is accessible. everybody we're over here at the very first portal of the day 
But before we go into this mine, I wanted to talk about something briefly, and this is about bad air, okay? Outside right now, the wind is blowing at a constant 20 miles per hour with upwards of, say, 30 mile an hour gusts. And the reason that is, is because we've got a low pressure system moving across the western United States right now, bringing all of this wind uh, ahead of a cold front that's moving in over the next couple of days. Now, when you're exploring abandoned mines, bad air, or essentially no air, sits deep in the bottom of these old mines, okay? And that bad air pools down there like a bubble. So when you have a high pressure ridge of, that's moving over the continent, okay, and over the area of the mine that you're exploring, that high pressure ridge will keep that bubble of bad air down in the, deep, in, in the bowels of the mine, similar to like a barometer keeps the mercury low as a high pressure system moves across the land, right? Now, when a low pressure system comes across the land in behind it, like what we've got going on today, that bad air, just like the mercury in a barometer, will rise up, okay, as it's coming over the land. So tunnels that were covered in bad air with the high pressure system, all of a sudden that air will rise up and it'll flood out areas of the mine with bad air that didn't have it before. And that's what you really have to watch out for when you're exploring these ba abandoned mines. Today is a day just like that. It's windy outside. I know for a fact we have a low pressure system moving across the area. And I know for a fact that that bad air could potentially rise up into other areas of this mine. And that's why on a day like today, we're just gonna concentrate on the primary haulage levels of these mines. And we're not gonna dive deep down into them. Okay, so let's get started on this big old haulage at it. All right, everybody, let's explore this old mine. But technically, it really isn't that old. This one is only about, uh, what, 40, 40 years since they stopped operations, roughly. I like it. Now, as we are entering the portal here, I'm already noticing that the dust in the air is, is, is going into the mine rather than blowing out. We've got plenty of airflow. That's always a real good sign. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, just like I've done in the past, I'm not gonna bore you guys with uh, hundreds if not thousands of feet of tunnel. We're just gonna race on forward and uh, try to find something really cool to show you folks. Okay, let's get going. Okay, so we have reached our very first junction here. The, uh, looks like the primary continues off going straight. We've got this massive compressor pipe going off to the right, out that direction. And I can see, there's, maybe there's a shop up in there. Let's look here. Yeah, we have something going on up there. Maybe we'll head off that direction first. Let's look off this direction next. That compressor pipe continues on up this way too. Oh yeah, look at all the ver various drifts, Mr. M. You can tell where they've imp imp uh, they're doing the uh, room and pillar method in this mine. Yep, it's huge. Okay. Turn it back around. Let's go start over here where I can see what looks to be an office. Yeah, in these large mines like this, um, we've got every single light that we own for the channel and even that's not enough. I'm looking into buying something special for large mines like this, but it's kind of a pretty penny. What do we have here? A lot of visitors in this mine over the years, leaving all of their trash behind. 
Yep, here's your electrical boxes. Okay. Nothing too interesting jumping out at me right away. Let's uh, go around the corner here and see what's in these old little shacks. What do we have in here? Yeah, looks like a place to just kind of keep your tools and whatnot. All right. Let's go back and look at the door here. Anything hiding in there? Nope. Lots of welding rod laying around. Okay. Looking around the corner here. Oh, look at all the air filters on the ground. Stacks and stacks of air filters. We saw a bunch of those in that last big mine too. Probably coming out of uh, some piece of equipment, maybe like a mucker or a loader or something like that. Off to my left here, is this the, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how tall this commode is there, Mr. M. My goodness. Holy. Here, let me hop up on this. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, wow. Glycat. All you need I, is a little privacy. I, I feel like a gargoyle perched up on this one. This thing's like three feet tall. Nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that one. It's around the corner here. Do you want to turn the lights back on? What's hiding behind the behind the pooper? Ooh. Oh, there's a little thing going off that way with a. Uh, is that an air duct? Let's look here. Yeah, it certainly is, and it still has the fan installed in it, right there. Look at that. All right, well, I may come back and revisit this. Um, well, you know what, I'll tell you what, guys, since I'm just right here, let me just hop over it real fast and see what it does. <laughs> I think I want to go back the other direction first, but I'm just, I, I'm curious. I want to peek around the corner. Oh yeah. It just, uh, it circles back and heads deeper into the mine. Anything in that box there? Nothing. Okay. Let's just look over here real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Heads deeper into the mine, way up in there. Okay, so we're just going to kind of st start exploring everything to the right. So uh, I'll meet you guys back over there by the outhouse. I'll see you over there. Okay, guys, I rarely do this in mines, but you have heard me in the past talk about mines that are uh, utilizing the room and pillar method. Those kinds of mines you can possibly get lost in because they're laid out like a big checkerboard. So I haven't used these in a while. I got my little fanny pack here uh, and I keep these with me. And these are my little flashers. See, I got a little orange flasher here. So this is how I know and, and they last for days, literally days. So I'm going to put one of these over here. Oh, would you just go away crying out loud? <laughs> God. So I'm going to put one of these flashers right here. And that is so we know our exit and we're going to keep placing those along the way as we get deeper and deeper into this mine. Okay, so like I was saying, just um, kind of use your imagination and picture a checkerboard. We're working our way down the right hand side of that big checkerboard.
cool in here. It is, it's very chilly in here. Now, of course, over the years, people have spray painted, uh, like there on the wall, out. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to show you guys my little flasher system that I use in these mines. Here we have a, yeah. There's a big stope above our heads here that they were working and maybe I can get, give you a better look at it. Right here. Goes up that direction. Now I'm assuming that if we keep traveling this direction, we are going to uh, eventually get underneath what I showed you earlier, and that was that uh, that big open stope outside. So here we at, are, we're at the 6830 stope. Where does this go? Oh, very cool. And we've got a ladder, a nice looking ladder. And it goes up into this stope. Oh yeah. With a landing. I can see terraces up there. Okay. Well, that may be something that we'll maybe come back and revisit. Let's look around the ladder here real quick. And this is just going to head off back deeper into the checkerboard. Okay, I don't want to head back that direction quite yet. Like I was saying, I want to stay along this right hand side. Let's get back around that ladder. That's pretty cool, Mr. M. That may be a ladder we can explore later on. Nice. Look down here. Oh, this has seen better days, huh? Yikes. Look at how all this has come in. Oh boy. Yeah. Whew. But there's quite a path here. A lot of explorers have been on this. Yeah, there's a real nice path. You should be you should do just fine coming over this rubble, Mr. M. Hi. Don't be afraid. If I see something too sketchy for me, it's definitely too sketchy for you. Another... There we go. Another drift headed off that direction with a sign saying exit. Well, that's kind of got my curiosity. Let's look over there. No, <laughs> the sign says exit, but the spray paint says no exit. I think we have a powder mag, maybe a powder magazine up here. Let's look at it real quick. Nope, this is just an air door. See how they built the built the plywood up around that structure and then they completely foamed it all off. And immediately as I stepped through, I got a blast of air in my face and that drift continues on that direction, deeper into the checkerboard. All right, turn it back around. That's pretty cool, but that's not a direction I wanna go right yet. We're gonna stay along the right hand side of this monster. Don't say monster. <laughs> don't don't say monster? Don't say monster. Okay. Oh, look out. Whoa. Oh, all right. Oh, look at what we've got here. Wow, nice find, Randy. I've been seeing a lot of this all through the mine. Look at the pyrite coming out of that. Just a massive amount in that right there. Oh, it's pretty flaky, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then there's more higher up on that rock right there. 
Wow. Cool. Oh, hey, Randy. What happens if you take the purple light to it? I almost forgot. We're not. Yeah, we're not going to forget this time. So uh, test. here, you get the you get the purple light. If you see something really cool, let me know. You break it, you bought it, Randy. But if you break it, you bought it. <laughs> All right, and this is as far as this one goes into a whole bunch of porphyry material. That's why it's so soft and crumbling. Okay, well, I'm gonna make a decision on which direction we're gonna head off into this mine. So uh, I'll meet you further back, maybe by, by, by that bulkhead. See you back there. Okay guys, I've decided that we're gonna now travel deep into the checkerboard here. Um, there's a spray paint here on this wood that says to the man way, that seems pretty interesting to me. Let's go explore that. But before we do, let's put another one of these flashers on that rock there. Okay. All right, back to the air door. And uh, we also have a nice big compressor pipe to follow. So I'm not too awfully concerned about getting lost in this mine because all of the compressor pipes are going to lead outside. All right, here we go. What do we have? How deep do we can we get into this thing? Now, do we have a winds here? Looks like there might be something going down. Yeah, indeed we do. With a sign that says, danger, open hole. And this is what I was talking about earlier. We're gonna stay out of the, uh, the deeper parts of this mines because of today's weather conditions. Okay, turning back around here. We have a whole bunch of drifts going off that direction. One to the left, an old one to the right, another one straight ahead that goes way up in there. And then back over here. Fans are still in place for bringing fresh air into the mine for the workers. We've got down here on the floor a cardboard box that says Atlas Powder Company. All very modern. I got to looking at that uh, pyrite up close back there. That was really cool. Um, how it was forming in and around all the quartz. Here we have another ore pass coming down and there's more of that pyrite. Let me show you this, guys. Look here, see how it's flaking out of that vein? All right, let's go up there and get a close shot for you. Right there. And it's really flaky. Look at that piece. Just glistening. Gorgeous. I might just find a, a, a big chunk of this, even though it is pretty flaky. If I can find a larger softball size piece for you guys, uh, I'll put it up on the eBay site. Okay, turning around here. You, see, you notice what we've got going on here, Mr. M? Ore pass after ore pass off to the right-hand side, coming down from that stope. Yeah, and these heavy tracks are the same heavy tracks that we saw outside. Oh yeah. These are heavy tracks. Yeah, they're like 24 gauge. Yeah. 
They're the heaviest gauge I've seen in the mine. There's a ore pass going up there. Now I can see rock bolts in the back of the mine, way up in there, see those rock bolts? So indeed, if we went back to where that wooden ladder was, we could get up there into that stope and explore that. That would take us, that would take us up to where they were working. I just love this stuff. <laughs> this is a very, very large mine. And remember guys, this is only one portal out of four within this complex. And I'm starting to believe the rumor of uh, that you could spend weeks exploring this mine and probably never see all of it. Okay. I'm glad you brought them electronic breadcrumbs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have another ladder here. And this one has a tool skip. Let me show you. Right there. Ladder off to the left and a tool skip off to the right. And the rope is still in place to drag up uh, drill steel and whatever else the miners needed to work that stope. You're not gonna bust the move up there, Gly? Well, not yet. Right, not yet. Right now, um, what's getting the best of me as far as curiosity-wise is this, this primary. See how they implemented the wood above our heads here to keep stuff from falling down on the tracks? Mm-hmm. It makes you wonder how much weight is above our heads. Probably so, not much. Nah, eh, probably not. Probably, probably, probably about the weight of a teaspoon. What do you think? So all the stuff we're crawling over is actual or passes that they had. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Jeez, look at all the stuff in here. Junction boxes, electronics. Um, look at this board here, Mr. M. You suppose there's a little bit of weight on that? They call that a hanger. <laughs> look at that one. Yikes. You and see then, that one even? I'm getting over to it. Look at this one, right? Look at how that one's bowing. Look at the I beam. I know that, that's that's the one I'm on. That big I beam. It's probably bowing down six to eight inches. Yeah. And uh, and then off to my oh goodness gracious. <laughs> that's scared. just really I'm, ugly looking. I'm scared. Okay, I'm gonna. Where does that go? That's going to go kind of back towards the exit of this mine. I think what I want to do, guys, is before we head that direction, well, the first thing I really want to do is get out from underneath yeah. all of that craziness. Yeah. I don't even think Randy's coming. Okay, so here's another spot for uh, another one on the floor here, leaving our breadcrumbs behind us. Okay, so we've come down that one drift and we've more or less paralleled um, with the uh, one we were exploring on the outer perimeter of what I've been calling the checkerboard. This one seems to be paralleling off right next to it. What do you say we speed this up a little bit until we get to some interesting stuff? Looks like we're coming up to another air door. Is that sunshine I see? Let's get around this here. I'll be darned. Look here. So there's uh if anything happens 
We gotta just crawl out that little hole. Yeah, we've got sunlight coming out right there. Okay, that's as far as this one goes. This used to go outside, and then they threw all these big old boulders in the way. So we're gonna work our way back to that flasher and where that uh, area was about to collapse and then head down that other direction. See you over there. Okay, everybody, we worked our way back to that real sketchy area with all the splintered wood. That whole section is gonna come down any time now. What I did is uh, I dropped that flasher from that direction so we know that is our way out. And that up there is where we just came from. Now behind me here, we've got two choices, okay? We've got a big drift going off to the right with an eight inch compressor pipe headed off that direction. And then this one here going off that direction, which my internal compass is telling me that's gonna head right straight back to the main portal. Um, what I'm gonna do here is we're just gonna keep following this giant eight inch compressor line as that tells me we're going to have more workings up into this area. Wow, look at what we have here. So, is, is that natural? That is, that's a natural hanging wall right there. Look at the size of that thing. Off to my right, what is this? Oh, this is just a, uh, it's an ore pass that came down to this point. And then what I'm standing on right here is a ore, ore collection point from Stopes are working high above us. All right, around the corner here, that's just uh, really cool the size of that hanging wall there. Insane. Yeah, they've got it all rock bolted. All right, well, we're just going deeper and deeper into this massive room and pillar mine. We've got a sign on the wall here. It says uh, the doghouse is that direction and the exit is, is where we just came from. And that makes sense. I can feel, feel all that air coming from where we're I do. Yeah, it's just blasting from behind us. Cold. Um, off to the right. What's up there? Just keeps going, but it looks like it might stop. I'm going to poke up here real quick and see if that uh, is indeed doing anything. Oh, hang back, guys. I'll let you know what I find. go up here and around the corner probably comes to a stop let's find out I'll just quickly move through this section yeah we've got another ore pass off to the right and oh it did keep going but a lot of material have co has come down from those stopes and block that off. No, this one does keep going. Okay, let's uh, put a check mark on that one. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get back to it or not, but uh, I'm turning around. I'm gonna head back to the guys and we'll go down to the, uh, the other one and see what, uh, see what the doghouse is. See you over there. All right, we're back up here by the crossroads. A moment ago, we were just to the right of Mr. M there. Let's go see what the doghouse is. Mr. M, have you ever been put in the doghouse? Yeah. <laughs> Not lately, no. Well, 
Let, let's go see where Mr. M used to live. All right, what do we have here? What is this? Yep, that's coming down from uh, those stopes. Lots of air blasting in my face right here. Wow. And those boards were acting as a, like a skip. So you could put a loader down here and drop it all in. All right. Well, let's keep on headed down this direction. Once again, I think what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, speed this up until we can get to something interesting again. Here we go. Okay guys, we are got, uh, found something neat here. Let's turn our, <laughs> off to the left. I was really enjoying that zoomy zoomy speedy speedy shot there, yeah, Mr. M. <laughs> what do we have here? I smell a bunch of old oil, oily kind of a smell coming out of this. Fan is still spinning. It just goes to show you guys how much airflow is in this mine today because of the weather outside. Let's look in here. Let's get a close look at that fan. Turn around here. Look how much resistance is on that. Not too bad. <laughs> there it goes. It just it's gonna start spinning again here in a moment. Off to my right is that's interesting. What is this? Oh, it's a timer. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's a Dayton timer. And inside here. Wow. You name it, it's in there. Fuses, relays. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to head back to the uh, where we just were. We're going to continue following the tracks here. I wanted to point that fan out to you guys. That looked kind of cool. So, what do you say we uh, continue our super duper speedy shot? Here we go. Okay guys, we are gonna take a break right here. Did you notice how many drifts that we bypassed? I'm gonna show you one that goes around the corner. It seems to me now if we were to start uh, turning to the left, that's gonna keep taking us back to the exit. But uh, Mr. M, <laughs> hey. Where's Randy? <laughs> I don't know. He was that way. He's... <laughs> Randy? I see light. Oh, there's his light. Yeah, he's way up in there. Yeah. 
There he is. I thought he got abducted by aliens or something. Maybe. You know, we're pretty close to... Uh, Area 51. Area 51. Um, hey, Phil, for a Halloween prank, let's ditch him. <laughs> that would be mean. Well, we'll take a break here a moment. We'll wait, we'll wait, wait for Randolph to catch up to us. Yeah, start throwing your little electronic breadcrumbs everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back in a moment. Okay, Randy finally caught up with us. He was lagging way back there behind us by hundreds of feet. And I asked him, so did you find anything interesting back there? And he indeed did. So let me show you guys. Up here on the ceiling, right now he is using the UV light. See how all that's glowing? So what that is, is, is spray paint that the miners were using in this section. Um, you can't see it with the naked eye. Bring it back this direction, Randy. There you go. You can just, yeah, you, I guess you can kind of, kind of make it out with the naked eye, but that black light really, really makes it shine, doesn't it? And they're identifying an ore body there, you can tell. It's like... Yeah, it's you're right. They're identifying a vein right there. Look at that uh, sedimentary in it. Yeah, let's let me let me go up here. I'm gonna get a little closer for you guys. Right there, shine off to the left. There you go, uh, Mr. M. Take your light off of that for a second. Yeah. See how they highlighted this area? Pretty cool. But that's the only. Well, that's like a pumpkin right there. <laughs> hey, there's there's our Halloween pumpkin, Randy, right there. It kind of looks that way. And as Randy pointed out, there's a W spray painted over here. And he says that's the atomic symbol for tungsten. W. 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 All right. So what we're going to do next, we're going to keep following this eight inch compressor pipe and see just how far this passageway goes so let's uh speed up the footage and put it back into happy happy speedy mode what do you say mr m hit the turbo button here we go Okay, looks like we have found, uh, at one time, this was a portal going to the outside, and it's all caved in now. Let's look up here. Yeah, that goes to the outside right there. A bunch of air blowing in, a, in, in at us. Um, this here was probably, yeah, that would have led straight outside to another portal of this mine okay well what do we want to do now guys I mean this thing is pretty much going everywhere do we want to head back to one of those ladders and maybe take a peek up into one into those stopes that'd be fine that would be kind of fun why don't we head back the way that we came gather up our little flasher flashers good idea if we can find them yeah and uh and, uh, and maybe explore one of those stopes. We'll go back that direction. Next week on Abandoned and Forgotten Places, episode 78. Aha! Yes. Beautiful. Look at that one. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Aha! And indeed, we have our first borehole. Look at this thing. Hey, uh, Mr. M, flip your camera around and look behind you and then look straight down. <laughs> Ooh, man. <laughs> look. Unreal. Unreal. Oh my God, bro. This guy won't not do it. <laughs>
clean. Every time we go out on these outings, Randy only eats one thing and one thing only. A can of tuna. It's a can of tuna. And every single time he forgets a spoon. So he, no, I don't. He I usually to, remember one. No, this Randy, I have time. watched. No, Randy, I have watched you MacGyver a spoon a Every half a time. dozen times. Bullshit! Time. I've only done this one other time. You've never had a spoon with you. I've never seen a spoon. Uh, I usually, have I've a taught fork. him how to make a lid out of the lid. You did. Uh, you showed me how to the do lid it. on the last one. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I had my own lid. He puts his whole head in the can. <laughs> That's why his mother would never let him eat pickles, because he'd get his head stuck in the <laughs> jar.